Welcome to Maven Analysis for Hedgehogs. In this video, I will show you how to deobfuscate Confuser X2. And to do so, we are going to use Python and write a small script so that we can tackle the parts of the obfuscation that D4.CEX or NoFuserX cannot handle yet. You will find the script and the full analysis of the sample on GData Tech Block. I will put a link to the blog article in the video description below. And same with the sample. So if you want to do and um, replicate what I do here in the video, I always put a link to the sample in the description below. In the first part of my video, I will show you how I perform triage on the sample. Now, if you're already very experienced, you may want to skip this step because it might be a little bit boring, but I think especially if you're a beginner, it will be very useful to know how I actually determined that this is Confuser X, for example. So how do I look at a sample if I don't know anything about it? And how do I figure out what to do next? Now, this is a DLL file. And if we look into Detect It Easy, we see that it's a .NET library. So let's look at the strings because that usually gives me already a lot of information on such a file and where to start. So when you scroll down here, you see, all right, um, these strings are all, they, they don't make sense, right? So this is a typical look for an area that has been compressed or encrypted. Here we can see the .NET version, the framework version. And below that, that is where the header starts for .NET. So the header, let me show you that. Has the it has the, starts with the magic bytes B as JB. So if we search for that, that's where we are. And here you can see all of the names for the .NET streams. Usually, you only have these streams once: strings, US, GUID, blah. However, in this case, we have them several times. And that is actually not allowed according to the specification. Many tools that work according to the specification will bail out. I guess that's the reason. Um, and it's an indicator for a certain obfuscator. Let's get back to that later. So what else do we see? So here um approximately starts the strings stream so this contains all of the strings that belong to methods function names class names um so that's already quite interesting here we see some download file command we see reference to an archive so if I were to figure out what this file is doing, I would actually check for these um, method names specifically. Another zip name, ionic zip. This resource name is quite odd. Here's mention of a web client, so it has some networking internet component and that's already everything so what i don't see here is the us stream contents so the us stream stands for user defined strings and they are not part of that so whenever you let's say you write a hello world and the string hello world is a user defined string it's defined by the developer and these are not part of that. They are probably also obfuscated. Let's check on virus Toto. The detection names don't tell us anything except for Grydensoft, which says it's a BrowseFox adware. 
we check the relations, we see execution parents, which are either an ISO file or an archive. So, and there are several of those where this file is inside. You see here, sandbox systems are trying to execute this with this command using run DLL because it's a library, so you cannot directly run it. Um, but there doesn't seem to be going on that much. I guess it doesn't execute properly here. We check the community. There's some useful comment here. Uh, they explain that this is delivered via email and the subject was this and then the email contains a URL where you download the ISO file. So when you click it, then it creates this file among some others. What we also see is a match on ConfuserX constants by Thor. So there's some indicator that this is ConfuserX. Let's look into the code now. I'm gonna start just here and uh, method names are obfuscated and we also see here control flow obfuscation. So control flow flattening. Um, a bigger array, this is gonna be interesting. So yeah, let's try to deal with Confuser X here. Oftentimes my go-to for dealing with Confuser X is using NoFuser X. It's an, a tool, a command line tool that you can use to deobfuscate it. And that also partially works here, except for the strings. Um, however, later on my approach won't work with this. So the resulting file will not execute the way I want it to. And what worked for me, and that was more by trial and error, is um, a D4 dot variant called D4.cx. So this deals with vanilla confusex and it's a D4 dot fork. So let's use this one. The result almost looks the same as um, no fuser X but it seems there are not as many errors then, so. Drag and drop it in here, correctly detects confuser X. So let's see what the result is like. We can see now that the methods have default names and what we can also see, this looks way better. So the control flow flattening has been reverted and now we can actually read the code and understand it partially. Partially because the strings have not been dealt with. So we can see here this get method it requires a string, but instead of a string, we see a call to method three, and there it provides some key, int zero, and it's a generic method, and it calculates uh, a string then, but only if this is true. So what is this doing? This is some anti-debug mechanism um, it checks if the caller of this method is the current assembly. So whenever you want to call this method from the outside, it will not res return any string. So there is a lot of stuff to deal with. So seeing that we have several methods here that work the same way. So we have method to 
three, four, and five, six. That's it. So five different methods, right? Um, and they all seem to have a slightly different way of computing the string. So this is a pain in the ass, actually. <laughs> So let's let's try to deal with that. Um, my my first idea is now I don't really want to replicate this function um, because I would have to replicate them all. What I would like to do instead is that we just try to solve this dynamically. So we call the method, for instance, from PowerShell, and then it should return the string for us. This has some other obstacles, but you will see, we um, we are gonna manage. Uh, first thing though, is we get rid of the anti-debug stuff, right? Now here's one way you can do this. You click on the line you wanna remove. In this case, I want to remove this if statement. I just want to execute or make this execute no matter what. So we right click here, we say edit IL instructions. Now this is highlighted, the if statement, including the calls inside of that. So we right click and say knob instructions. And we say, okay, we do this also for method three. Method four. Method five. And method six. All right, now we save this. And we should have an assembly now that we can abuse as a decryptor for our strings. Right, so let's see. So let's not try to call this method from PowerShell. Now, I have done this before. I'm gonna link a video here where I also called a method and de decrypted strings with PowerShell. However, we will encounter some difficulties here, which is why I decided to make this video. And I should probably preface this with, when you write the following line, this will execute malware code. So make sure that you're using a VM, that you're using an environment where you can execute code. Now, you may think you're just loading a file, right? So how, why does this execute anything? it does execute the module constructor. So this can already contain malicious code. So please be careful, right? Um, we are using the cleaned version. Drag and drop it in here. And now we should have our assembly. And this worked perfectly. So now we are going to get our method. Now, generally what should work is that you enter something like namespace class method arg1. So usually you would execute a method this way. But this doesn't work here. If you try this, Let's see what we would have to enter. So let's say we start with method three because it was called above this one. Let me check. So let's say we want to deobfuscate, decrypt the string here, right? So method three um, and the fully qualified name would be module and then method three, I guess. 
So you might be tempted to try this. Let me go where it's being called and grab this key. Missing type name. Anyhow, no matter how much you try this, it won't work. You cannot access the global type like this. Um, it doesn't work. What works though is to resolve the method using token. What's a token? The token is this one here and it's an identifier for this method. So we can use this, wait, we don't want this one, we want method three. So we can use this token to resolve the method instead. Let's do that. We access our module. We call resolve method and we call that on the token. And this works. So we get back as method three and in module trami.dir. So let's save this method. Next difficulty is now you may think, okay, we have our method and we can just invoke it with reflection, right? So the way this works is you call invoke and now you check, is it the static member or not? In this case, it's a static method. So we don't need a class instance. We um, say now for the first argument. The second argument contains the array with the parameters. That would be like the params list. We don't have this yet. So how do we define the params? First in array is defined like this in PowerShell, but we don't want one, two, three. We want this weird number here. So let's put it inside, call that. Now you see it doesn't work. It's complaining object reference, not set to an instance of an object. This error message does not make sense because it's a static method. So there, this is supposed to be now, it's not correct. Uh, no, the actual difficulty here is, or the actual reason we get an error and cannot call it this way is because it's generic. So this method here, um, you can see it also provides another, well, quote unquote argument, which is what type this method is. So it's it's a string type. So here we see it's a generic type T, but in order to execute it needs to know what type T actually has. And that's what we need to provide here as well. And this is how you do it. You provide uh, via mag generic method, you provide the type and then you get back the concrete method. So let's now do the same, but with our new one. And this did not work for the reason that we used this DLL when we loaded the assembly. So this is not with the knobs, remember? So we need to I actually loaded the wrong one. So let's load the correct DLL and then it should be fine. Not one. And now we got it. So now we can decrypt all of the strings. However, well, I don't want to do this manually. So that's the issue. The, there are too many um, strings in this binary that I want to go through all of them manually. So we have to somehow um, see me automatically resolve this. How are we gonna do this? We are gonna do this using a Python script and uh, dnlib. The first thing you will need is dnlib. Uh, secondly, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code, but you can also use Notepad++ or anything like that. Um, so let's now include the nlib 
you may have to install Python at for it to work. So you may pip install Python net like this, and then you should be able to import CLR. Okay, that works. So we will need those imports here. And this will show a warning here. However, um, the Visual Studio IDE just doesn't know that we actually have this available now. So let's test if this works. It says file not found. Okay, so we will just provide the path. Full pass, that shouldn't work. Right. And it prints done, so this works. So we want to use this file here. And what I would like to do now is extract all of those keys. So what I, I'll keys for the decryption function, like uh, these integer values here. I want to extract all of them. And uh, then later on, I will use a list of these to decrypt all of the strings. So let's try that. So let's load this file. And see if we can load the module. Let's also print the module. And it prints the module name trimi.dll. So this is working despite all of these. Uh, let's say, can we ignore this? Ignore this. So what we actually want is to extract all of the string IDs from this module. So let's do a function for that. Let's say extract values from module and then we print the values. We iterate through the module Now oh, this is like that. So now we are going to extract the values from all methods using one function that extracts it from one method. So this is going to make things a little bit easier. And so this is the method, right? If the method has no body, we just return an empty list. And otherwise we return all the values that we extract. So this is gonna be that. Uh, Sorry. So So let's look at let's look at the IL code actually here. So Here's how it looks like if such a method is being called. So what we want to extract is this 
Um, and what we see before that is an ldc.i4 and then a call. So I'm just going to look like um, after this pattern, I'm going to look for ldc i4 and then a call. And if I find this pattern, I'm going to extract the operand from ldc i4. So just verify that the rest looks similar. Um, so here is another, wait, don't go there. Is another one. So LDC I4 method two, LDC I4 method six. So this should actually work. So we look for two different instructions. I'm going to do a safety check here that we still have two instructions left. And the first one was LDC I4. And the second one is the call instruction for the, it's what it should be. So if LDCI4 opcode Let's let's put this to a bigger screen. So this should check if we find the correct pattern here. Now well, let's print if that's the case. And And if that's the case, we obtain the operand for LDC I4. So let's try this. Gonna run it. We just created an infinite loop because I didn't modify the instruction. All right. Do this again. I forgot the code here. And now it works. So now we get a list of all of the string keys for decryption. Let's copy this list here so that we can use it and um, decode all of the strings. So we resolved this one method, right? Let's um, create an array with all the IDs. Wait, not array, IDs. Yeah, now we got all of the IDs and we can execute a PowerShell command to uh, iterate through all of them. I'm adding a try catch to ignore any errors because sometimes if you provide the wrong ID, it just might throw an error. 
Let's now decrypt the string. Wait, did it? Method concrete, I think. Yeah. Invoke. Now, and we want to invoke. What we got from the ID. Let's try this. Nothing happens. I think we need to turn this into Yeah, that works. What we did now is we saved all of the arguments for the string decryption method in an array. This is the array and for each ID in this array we invoke method for decryption using well here using this ID but we have to turn it into base object to make it work with PowerShell here using the try catch to ignore errors if we don't do that let's see how it looks like this is what it looks like wait this is not what it looks like. This is what it looks like. So you will get the strings, but you will get in between all of these exceptions, which is not so nice. So here are the decrypted strings for this one method. So we have more methods we need to work with though. Not actually an issue because it's just five, right? Um, let me check on that. So we start here, method two, that is token ends with four, token ends with five, with six, with seven, and with eight. So we need um, we need tokens four to eight. And also, I would like to map this actually to the ID that we use for that. So let's let's do that. So we are going to say we want to print this. See how that looks like. And now we get all of the empty strings as well, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, let me save this. So this was the token for this. Let's do that. Try this. So we have the next one. Put this in four. Six. Seven eight. Now we got all of our strings here. Might be a bit crude, but it uh, de kind of depends how much work you want to put into your script and automating things, but if it's just those, 
yeah, I figured this is enough. So how do we deal with this? Um, I would like to make like a merge list of that. So we are going to remove the empty ones. So we can use regular expression for that. So make sure put here regular expression and all we need to do is look for this pattern. So because um, when it ends in a new line or like if there's directly a new line after this pattern, then it's something we want to actually remove. So let me replace this. That seems to work. We do this for all of the others as well. Place all, save it. So and now we create one unified list of strings. calling it strings dictionary because that's what it is. Ah, uh, what did it do? So. This particular one seems to be there three times. Let's remove it. And actually, I also don't really like that it has a space after the colon. All right. Then should be something we can work with. It seems some of them are put on the new line maybe because there was new line there. But the rest looks quite okay. Let's convert this now into a Python dictionary. So let's use some magic, some regex magic again. First part, second part. So we just divide this into two parts. First part, second part, but the second part we put into single quotes. So let's replace them all. And the reason I'm choosing single quotes is because we see here the double quotes everywhere. So this should be easier. There's one final thing to deal with though. Um, it cannot end in the backslash, even if we use raw strings. Actually, we should use raw strings. Let's revert this. Um, so we put this into raw string make an R here. Let's maybe put a space here, replace all. Oh, damn it, wait. This part isn't right. Place R, yes. One thing is missing and that's the comma. So this looks great. And now if it ends in in the backslash single quote, we want to turn this into backslash backslash single quote. Let's do this as well. We have zero occurrences. I cannot imagine. Is this 
Ah, yes. Let's do this. And do this. Seven occurrences were replaced. Let's see. So yeah, this is, works fine. So the reason is like even with the raw string, uh, the backslash is special if you use quotes with that. So in, if this appears at the end with the single quote, we need to uh, escape the backslash as well. So this should work fine as Python dictionary and you can save this and can now use it to replace the actual calls to the decryption methods. So let's actually copy this script here and modify it. So create a new file. Isn't reacting on Python. Yes. So copy this. Just call it the obfuscator pi. And instead of extracting those values, we are now going to use the Python dictionary. So let's paste this in there. Only need to remove the last comma. Everything else should work fine. We rename this to decrypt strings from method. And this is decrypt strings from module. This time we actually don't need those values here. Right. So So where do we write it to? So we will save the module to out file after we have decrypted the strings. And now we just have to apply that. So um, the reason I'm reusing that is because, uh, again, we need to find the location where this opcode pair appears. And then we are just going to look up the dictionary and replace the uh, calls there. So let's get rid of this. We don't need this value. Yeah, we need this value actually. And what we do now is checking if it is in the dictionary. And if that's the case, we obtain the decrypted string. And now we fix the instruction. So there are two things to do. First, see, let's look at it here. So we have this IDC I4 and we have this call. So the call instruction, I want to replace it with a load string operation. So instead of the call, there will be a load string and then the decrypted string. And we don't need the IDC4 anymore. So we will place a knob instead of it. So Let's do that, right? We say call instruction opcode is now opcodes 
load string and we say call instruction operand is the decrypted string and the LDC so load constant is the meaning of LDC opcode is our uh, opcodes not Let's just print the successful decoding here. And that's actually it. Let's try this. Let's give it a try. So it claims it has decoded all of these, but did it work? I'm gonna find out. Let's find the deobfuscated binary. It's here. So let's see. If we are going here, yeah, this worked very well. So now we see all of the deobfuscated strings here. So this is like quick and dirty, um, I guess. If you wanted to spend more time with this, you could also extend this d4.deobfuscator and uh, to make it work correctly for this kind of constellation here. But um, yeah, this is like the method when you want to spend the least time on it and just de-analyze this particular sample. So um, as for analyzing the rest, um, well, I don't think it's that interesting to do this here on camera. I don't know. I'm always like, okay, once I figured out how to make it readable, the rest is actually quite easy. Um, I'm not sure if you think differently about that. Let me know. But for me, it's like, okay, now I cracked the the, the obfuscation and the rest is like, yeah, okay. Uh, figuring that out on camera is probably not so interesting. If you want to learn meta analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.